Hey guys, Orvis8. Uh, today I'm going to bring you a, another how-to for computer maintenance. This is going to be how to clean your keyboard. Uh, my specific model of keyboard is the G15, so that's probably what I'm going to name the, name the video. But um, this should work for probably I don't know, a good maybe 80% of all keyboards. They're going to be very similar in how they uh, disassemble. This one specifically is a little different because it's a gaming keyboard, so it's got some extra like things in there. It's either it's a bit more complicated but uh, it should still have the general design so let's go over the uh, <clears throat> the list of things that you need um, real quick though I want to mention that uh, I apologize I'm kind of sick while I'm doing this video so um, I might be you know going you know <clears throat> coughing or something um, I have an upper respiratory infection uh, so I, again apologies um, so first on your list, I recommend that you have a flashlight. Uh, it's absolutely not needed, but uh, it would be useful. You'll need a can of compressed air. You'll need some alcohol. Uh, I'm using 91%, 70% should work too. You'll need a bunch of Q-tips, a Phillips or flathead screwdriver, depending on what your keyboard uses. Mine uses a um, Phillips and you might need a knife for prying a little bit which isn't recommended but you might need it and uh, oops it's over here hold on a second and a very small tipped flat head or a very small head Phillips so with those in mind let's get right into uh, how we're gonna start Alright, so first things first, when you're uh, going to start disassembling anything, you want to make sure that you have the proper tools. So we already have the tools. Um, we're going to take the keyboard and we're going to flip it over. Uh, for reference, I've already taken this apart one time. I started cleaning it to make sure I knew exactly how to take it apart. So um, I already have um, my numerical pad on the keyboard taken out, um, but I'm going to show you how to take it apart anyway. So most keyboards will have all of their screws on the back, so go ahead and flip it over. And um, mine specifically use Phillips, so I have a Phillips screwdriver. So I'm going to go ahead and take out the screws that I determined to put back in um, out so that the front panel of the keyboard can fall off. So you just go ahead and take your Phillips screwdriver and start taking them off. I guess while I'm doing this, I can talk about maybe some of the benefits to cleaning your uh, keyboard. Would be, uh, you know, it would definitely be cleanly. Uh, for cleanly, cleanly, man, I can't even speak today. Cleanliness, you know, having to clean computer parts is always good. Uh, another thing would be so that it helps uh, prevent the jamming of keys. You know, if you're ever maybe on like public keyboards where people have just been, you know, pigs and slobs and have crumbs and stuff under the keys, you know, sometimes you'll be hitting your key and it won't, you know, go or whatever. You know, this definitely helps prevent it. Um, all in all, it, it might take maybe an hour to clean your keyboard, depending on how complicated. I have extra keys and extra features and switches on mine, so it's a little more, a little bit more complicated. But uh, that's okay for me because uh, I've I've had this keyboard for I think uh, two years now, and this is actually the first time I'm cleaning it because my uh, my WASD keys are getting a little uh, clogged with uh, debris, so I decided to clean it. I haven't actually gotten over to them yet. I just decided that I would uh, do my um, numerical pad keys first. So all in all, I think I have like uh, 12 to 16 screws on the back of this. Um, thank God I didn't put them all back in. I only put in, I think, maybe like 10. Or uh, actually it looks like 8. Just around the corners to keep the keyboard together. So I'm going to go ahead and I've got them all off. So now if you flip over your keyboard, the front of your keyboard should be kind of loose. Um, mine required a little prying, but I got it off the first time, so it's a lot easier the second time. Uh, you can go ahead and just find a corner that you want. Just break your fingers in there. You'll see it starts to come apart. And go ahead and uh, just kind of gently pry it open. I might have to do this off camera, it's kind of hard. Like I said, the first time I did this was a complete pain because there's like clips on the inside, but not on the outside. So it's kind of a pain. So go ahead and just, I'm running, just running my fingers along the seam here to break it apart. 
Sorry that I can't show it on camera, but I'm doing it off camera. All right, there we go. So I popped my one side off. So now I should be able to just gently take apart the rest of it by running my finger along it. And it'll start popping off. So now that the top is loose, I can flip it. Make sure that when you do this, you check on the inside. As you can see, because I'm looking through the camera, not actually in the keyboard, I have a cable in the back that connects my LCD panel. So I'm just going to gently move my top portion up and I can see that I have an LCD cable I have to deal with. So in order to take my LCD cable off I need to take a screwdriver and I need to pull up on the releases here on each side so I'm going to go ahead and do so and I can remove the ribbon cable and the top portion of my keyboard can now be taken away. Um, the bottom portion usually doesn't need to be cleaned. Um, I have like a little rubber thing that actually goes over most keyboards I have this. Uh, best way to clean that is you can just go ahead and take the corners and it'll go ahead and pop right off and then you can clean this. I'll put this to the side somewhere. Or I'll put it over here. Uh, the rest of this you can ignore unless if it's obviously very dirty but mine is extremely clean. Uh, so I'm just going to put this to the side. We will not be dealing with that for the rest of the video. We will be dealing with the top portion, which contains all of the keys. So, now we need to figure out how to get this gray panel off. Um, most keyboards won't have this gray panel. If uh, if you take all the screws off the back, usually the, the top portion of the keyboard will pop off. You'll be exposed to all the keys. So, I guess you can skip through this part. I'll... Um, put an annotation for the time that I have this off. Um, for this specific keyboard, if you're watching on how to clean this, this will be useful, so go ahead and keep watching this. So, go ahead and flip your keyboard over. And uh, unfortunately, my camera doesn't zoom out anymore, so I kind of have to look through it, which is a pain. Um, you'll There's little screws. I've already removed all of mine because this panel is actually held in by clips, but there'll be silver screws around the border just like uh, these silver screws here that hold in the entire front panel so they're all around the rim of the keyboard just go ahead and unscrew them and take them out for the majority of time for the you know, not the majority but for the uh, fact that uh, I don't want to make the video too incredibly long uh, you can go ahead and I already pre removed them like I said I took this apart before but I removed them so once you've taken out all the screws you'll notice that there are these little um, little clips around the uh, around the keyboard. They're all over the place. So that that's what's holding this gray panel on. These keys will not fall out with this panel removed, so you don't have to worry about like holding the panel on so all the keys don't dump out all over the place. Um, so you just go ahead and take your flathead and just go ahead and start pushing out all of the uh, little tabs that are holding it on. If you could do it by finger, that's great. This might take a little while because these uh, all kind of, the way they designed it, they all kind of like overlap each other. So if you're trying to get a corner out, it's pretty hard. Um, try not to use a lot of force when you're doing so. Obviously, you don't want to break your keyboard. So go ahead and just start popping them all out. As you can see, I'm getting some of mine by by hand my band-aid here is coming off I don't think it'd be a good idea to show you guys my bloody finger so there's none over here but uh, they are hidden under some right next to some of the keys so go ahead and make sure you get those Let's go ahead and start popping them go along the number pad which on the front will be your number keys on the back they're right under here so go ahead and start popping these ones out. These ones are the hardest. I don't know why, but they lo they love to get stuck. So these are the ones that gave me a problem. I hope I don't have the same problem with them getting stuck. Just keep popping them all out. So it looks like they're going to give me that same problem I had before. They're going to get stuck and they're not going to want to come out. So this is where you got to be careful. So I would recommend put your hand under a portion of it and go ahead and take your flathead screw, uh, screwdriver 
and go ahead and gently push them out so one popped out now I'm left with these two over here go ahead and get your hand under there just gently push try and pop them so I popped that one last one always the worst go ahead and get your hand under there this corner one came back in I'm gonna make sure it's out go ahead and push it this one's very difficult there we go alright so we have the uh, border I guess you can call it off of the keyboard so as you can see it's no longer on uh, I guess the only thing you need to clean on these are maybe like the rims around where the keys are uh, not that bad so we won't be dealing with this so go ahead and put this to the side so now we have access to all of the wonderful keys um, individually um, depending on how deep you want to go into cleaning I'm actually taking out all of my keys to get all the crap in between them and under them um, the majority of this you could just take your compressed air run it along here and it'll help blow it out but um, for the sake of deep cleaning um, I'll show you guys how to take your keys out so on the back you'll have each of your keys individually now what you want to do is let me grab actually one of my keys that I already taken out hold on a second so here is my number lock key let me flip it around it, here's my number lock key my camera doesn't auto zoom I apologize ahead of time so you'll see that there's this little plastic portion of the key and it will have two little tabs on it one here if it'll show you can kind of see it there and one on the other side what you this is how they're held in so what you want to do is take the tab of the flathead and gently just push in on the tab that holds the key in and pop one side out and then pop on the other side to take it out so let me put my key back and then I'll show you real quick uh, I recommend putting your hand under the key that you're going to pop out so for this sake I'm going to pop out my print screen key so go ahead and just put your screwdriver right on the key right on the tab just gently push on it you can hear maybe not see that it kind of half popped out you can see on the front that it's kind of like that go ahead and go from the other direction and just gently push on it and the key popped out so under these unclean keys there's maybe like some hair or something you can't really see it but um, you can see I hope that there is kind of like dirt and grime under here so I'm just gonna go ahead and just pop out all pretty much my entire keyboard so uh, just be patient with me while I uh, try and do this I'm most likely just gonna fast forward through this the matter goes, don't you want to live forever? Incoming!
to fight with the wrong man. Okay, so now that we have all the keys out, except for the uh, top keys, I'm not going to bother with them. Um, let's take, uh, move around a little bit. Let's take a, uh, got to readjust the camera here. There we go. Let's take a look at the other side. So, um, I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera, but there is a bunch of crap in between all the keys if you guys can see that um, compared to over here it looks very nice and clean over here it looks all filthy as fucking hell same said for the keys let me get one of my keys so here is my space bar uh, this is just the metal bracket that goes with it um, you can see in there that there is crap um, there's some hair in there that probably isn't going to show up on camera because I don't have the best camera in the world but the keys are also pretty dirty um, this little bar just goes in this little thing right here and clips in um, so just a note a good thing to do is keep all your keys in the same order that you took them out um, obviously this isn't perfect but these are the order that I took them out so I know exactly how they go back in. Let me go ahead and set my camera back up. So, um, I have like Wendy do that. If you don't, I guess you can always just look at like an another keyboard and you know they're all going to look the same minus that I have some macro keys. But uh, so now that I have this off, we go on to cleaning. Um, so, first thing I always do is I dust them. Uh, I've got a garbage can like a foot away. All I'm going to do is just kind of lean this into the garbage can and I'm just going to spray down to get it all off. I don't really think it'd be relevant to show it on camera, but I guess I could. So let me uh, move my camera over here. Okay, so here is my garbage can in all of its glory. And I'm just going to put the the keyboard over the garbage can and I'm just gonna spray down and try and get rid of as much as I can which isn't working because it doesn't like this let me try it like this there we go Okay, so we air blasted it. Let's bring it back over. And it looks, let me flip it around here, it looks a little better, but you can still see that there's stuff in there. So that's where the Q tips and alcohol come in. So, just like with my NES cartridge cleaning video, just go ahead and take one of your Q tips. Go ahead and take your alcohol, put a little bit of alcohol on your Q-tip, maybe roll it around so on your wrist so it doesn't a whole bunch doesn't go in there. Go ahead and just take your Q-tip, 
start running it along the inside of your keyboard to get some of the crap out. Now, again, this is kind of like extreme cleaning. You don't really have to do all this. Um, I just do. I suppose another thing you can do is you can actually... Um, I, I might end up just doing it anyway, but because I have an LCD screen, i got to figure out how to take that off, which is probably these in the back. You could, if your keyboard does not have any electronic components in it, move my camera, does not have any electronic components in it at all, so it is just the plastic frame, so I'm going to have to take all this out, just take it under some water and spray it. This is for maybe like really electronic keyboards, go ahead and use this. So for the sake of example, let me just go ahead and remove this, and I'll show you how you can clean this out with water. Okay, so uh, apologies for the lighting, but uh, it's pretty dark in our kitchen. So I have everything out of my keyboard right now. There are no keys in at all. Do n if you're going to wash with water, do not have your keys in your keyboard because your keys will contain um, more of the or it will keep more of the water under the key. And if you put it back on, you might damage any of the electronics. So make sure you do have none of your keys in when you do this. So just go ahead and simply take a sprayer, turn on your water, and then just spray it down. So let me, uh, there we go, it's better. All right, so now that it has been rinsed thoroughly, um, just kind of spot check it. There's a little piece of, piece of uh, something here that didn't come off, so just got it out with my finger. Just quickly spot check it. Um, looks extremely clean compared to before. So just go ahead and shake out your keyboard. And then go ahead and either air dry it or use some other method of drying it. Do not put anything back together unless this is 100% dry. Okay, so now that I have my entire keyboard cleaned, as you guys can see, it is pretty much spotless. Very nice and clean. There's a little bit of, you know, crap in there, or, you know, stuff. It it doesn't really bug me at all. You know, it's, it's just... Uh, it's just always going to be there, so I'm not a perfectionist. So this is a very good cleaning. Um, should solve any problems if you guys are having problems with your keyboard. So now it is time to clean the keys, which I'm just going to simply use a air blast compressor, or not a compressor, but the uh, canned air, the uh, dust air, or whatever. And uh, I'm just going to simply start plopping the keys back in. So just get a little foam mat, put it down. Start taking the parts. I uh, gotta flip it over here. It is extremely windy outside. If you guys can hear that, just gonna go ahead and start taking the parts and just simply just you know plopping them back on. You know, very simple. If I can align them up properly, there we go. So it's just like that. Um, so I guess I'm just gonna fast forward through this uh, again. So I'm just gonna start uh, taking all the keys, you know, air blasting them and plopping them in. So here we go. Sing a fuck for you!
right, so I got all of the keys in, as you can hear. So uh, the next step is basically to start reassembling the uh, the keyboard. So I gotta grab a part real quick. Okay, so grabbed all my screws and everything else. So go ahead and put the uh, logo back on, I guess. All right. So now that we have the entire keyboard back together, um, hopefully in the exact order, uh, you can go ahead and we're going to start uh, assembling the top portion back to the bottom portion of the keyboard. So bring your old keyboard, or the not the old, but the bottom portion back in. Take your rubbery overlay. I'm just going to shake mine out real quick, make sure I have nothing on it. And I'm going to go ahead and put it right back on. Make sure that it's held on with all those little nipples and uh, whatnot that are on the keyboard to hold it tight. Go ahead just once over. Just want to make sure I don't have anything in there. So it's now on and on properly. Go ahead and grab the top or yeah the top portion of your keyboard and we're gonna put the ribbon cable back on so uh, just the way I showed you guys it coming off I'm gonna put it back on I'm not gonna attempt to show it this time it's just simply the exact opposite put the ribbon cable in nice and easy make sure you get it in there Come on. There we go. Go ahead and push the cable holder down. So it's nice and snug. My logo fell off again. Get back on there. All right. And then you're gonna just uh, actually you know what I should have I forgot about this uh, the cable you have to put this uh, gray piece back on so go ahead and take it put it over your keys actually this logo looks like it goes on the outside so I'll just remove it for now go ahead and plop it on and then push it in so it locks in all of its corners I'm just going to put and lay this down right now. And then go ahead and just plop in all of the uh, those little uh, clip clips and pins around the edge of the keyboard. Go ahead and push and clip them back on. Yeah, I think I got them all. And then go ahead and on the inside of your keyboard, locked again somewhere, it's on this side, there we go, go ahead and all of these screws that were holding on the back panel, let me try and get this, there we go, all the screws, go ahead and put them back in to hold the panel on. Unfortunately, there's quite a plethora of them. Keep in mind that the silver screws um, on the G15 keyboard specifically um, are all the small ones that hold on the small pieces and the black ones are the ones that hold the back plate on. 
none of the black screws go on the inside. So make sure when you're cleaning your keyboard, if it's not a G15 keyboard, um, that you know what screws go where. So just going to keep screwing in all these screws. Again, unfortunately, there's quite a plethora of them. So I apologize. I'll probably just fast forward through all this. Okay, so now that all of them are in, we can go ahead and start um, putting the top back on. I forgot about that again, uh, my apologies. But now that it is on, go ahead and flip it over. And we're going to just plop the top onto the bottom, trying to make sure that everything lines up. Whoop! looks like I actually have a bracket that didn't pop in. No, I guess it did. It's just kind of popping out. No, it's not. All right, never mind. I'm just not used to the keys uh, being not popped out, I guess. So go ahead and just align everything so that you can get the keyboard back together. And once you do, go ahead and flip it over. Just kind of squeeze the edges so that everything locks on. And then you're going to take your black screws and go ahead and screw them all in. So I'm just going to fast forward through this one again and uh, we'll be done with it. What did they expect? No! this happen okay so keyboards back together um it's working let me open up like a word pad real quick so got a word pad up real quick so I'm gonna type my you know just type some random letters A S D F G H I J L you know as you can see just checking that all my keys are working so you know they all work so there you go that's how you clean your keyboard uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and um, like always remember to uh, rate thumbs up and subscribe and uh, now that that's done I think I heard myself a beer alright guys see you guys later for uh, my next uh, 
computer maintenance 101 video.